Uh, James Ham with us here. Uh, James, how are you feeling about the Kings and Minnesota tonight? Minnesota is a team I really started watching over the last couple of months. Um, Cause it was a team when they played the Kings the first time, excuse me, when they played the second time at the golden one center, I wasn't really sure of like, I wasn't clear like what they were. And I'm a much, much clearer now about what Minnesota is and what their strong suits are. What do you think about this matchup tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really tough matchup for the Kings. And we always talk about the length and athleticism of some of these teams that, and this is the, you know, probably the longest team you're going to face. The one difference I think is, I would point out that um, I think they have a, they don't have an advantage over teams like the Clippers or, say, I don't know, the Pelicans, is that they lack the physicality that we've seen from some of these teams that really give the Kings fits. So while they are long and super athletic, they aren't a team that really bullies you a bunch. And so I think that that's why it's, you know, they've split the season series and it's kind of left a door open. I also, Jade McDaniels didn't play in the first game and that was a big deal. Jade McDaniels is a superb defender and he defends, you know, one through four probably. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he can go out and defend De'Aaron Fox is a big deal. And when he wasn't there, Fox kind of got loose. Uh, the next time out, it wasn't really the same. And so I'd be slightly concerned if, if Fox doesn't play, because that means that Jade McDaniels slides over and plays against Keegan Murray. And that could really damage what the Kings try to do tonight as well. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a tough matchup, man. It's a tough matchup, and one of the things that we we just kind of talked about, talked a little bit about yesterday, talked a little bit about this uh, this afternoon, James was between the Denver and Minnesota games. I got the feeling that it's just like, man, just just get past these games. You want to win one and all this other stuff, but if you lose both of them, you lose both of them. Just get past them, and then. Your time to make a move starts when you come back home against Chicago with those 15 games uh, in the final 23 at that point being at home. That's going to be the determining factor of whether or not you can make this this playoff run, get the sixth seed, all this other stuff. Because you really, January and February, in my opinion, were just to stay above water. And now this is the time to make the move. Yeah, I'm with you on there on that. This is one of those games. You know, we looked at this five game set and we said, hey, if the Kings can go three and two in this five game set, that would be amazing because it's a really difficult set. They win the first two, then they fall apart in the next two. And you're looking at it like, OK, can they hold on and just make it two and three? The fact that two and three and three and two really isn't that big of a difference when you look at the group of games that they played. You know, when you look at that, you know, they had to beat the Clippers. They had to. They had to go in against a, a really good Denver Nuggets team and, and got thumped. So if it ends up that they they lose three games here, I don't think it's the end of the world either. Um, but you got the the Warriors and the Lakers that are now breathing down your neck, mm -hmm. and that's a problem. Like the the Kings are already they're in very precarious position when it comes to like the five through six, uh, five through eight grouping where you're hoping that they would somehow avoid the play-in and it'd be a fifth or a sixth seed. Now that that group of four is looking a lot more like a group of six. Um, you know, the Kings are only a game and a half up on the Lakers. They're two games up on Golden State. And while, yeah, they've got a whole bunch of home games coming up and they've got, you know, maybe a little bit easier schedule, it's not an easy schedule. Like their schedule is still really difficult, still top 10, most difficult in the NBA to finish out, but there are winnable games, especially I look at this next group of 10. This will tell us whether the Kings are going to be a playoff team or not. Pretty much. Like a playoff, like a top six team. Like, do they have it? Yeah. Like yeah. Games will tell you if they have a chance to make the top six. Well, yeah, that, but I'd even tell you this, like, I don't like the Kings chances against the Lakers or the Warriors in a play in series mm -hmm. in a play in game, because it's one game. And they have LeBron James and Steph Curry and they're going to get star calls and you're not. And so you're going to have to outright beat those teams if you're going to make it. And that's not very, very easy. That's, that's going to be a very, very tall task. If somehow it's that's Dallas down there. 
What's that? We got the Aaron Fox. Well, yeah, but the officials don't know that yet. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, that's, mean, a, good point. Yeah, that's like, a good point. That's a good point. This, this is the point. NBA. This is, I mean, let's not let's not act like everything is is on the up and up and easy peasy and and just straight. I mean, that's not how it's ever called. So those guys are going to get calls, and the Kings are going to have to win that game outright. And that's that's a tough that's a tough call. So if I'm that's, the Kings, I'd really like to be the number six seed or the number five seed, so I don't have to worry about any of that. I, I, I agree with you 100%, but I also look at, I mean, you got, you got to, to play. You know, like if you played um, just throwing out a team out there, Memphis, you probably wouldn't be able to play bad and win. It don't matter who you play. You got to play good yeah. and win. And if you yeah. play good, you, you should win. So I want to avoid it regardless. I don't want any part of a play-in just because – I don't want nothing to do with a play in. I don't want to see Steph. I don't want to see LeBron. I don't want to see Luca or KD just because they're all great. Um, but you, you're gonna have to play good regardless of who you play and when you play. You're gonna have to play good on Wednesday when you play the Lakers, let alone a, a play in. So yeah, just, no, I, that's gonna happen. I agree. I agree. And like, but I think to win a play in, you're gonna have to play more than good. Like if you don't bring an A plus game, you're going to lose. And that's just that's the reality. Like there, there's no other way around it. Like you've got to play one of your best games of the season. And if you don't, you're, you're not going to advance. And that's a, it's a tough pill to swallow because it has like huge ramifications, like tremendous ramifications. What are the, so let's, let's go over this cause this sucks. So let's just get this out of the way. Yeah. What are the ramifications for the Kings missing the playoffs? Well, not, think, not, not the, not the, you know, ramifications we're going to work up in our head about the roster, but the actual real ramifications that we know now. Yeah. The real ramifications are that you, you draft in 2024 and you have, I mean, it's, first of all, it's, it's not considered a good draft. So you could say, well, at least they get a draft pick or maybe they could trade that draft pick. So there's that. Um, but the problem that you have is that you're in the same situation you were this year where your future draft picks are tied up. So if the Kings don't make the playoffs, then they draft their own pick in 2024. But that means that their 2025 and 26 are fully tied up and they can't even trade their 2027 pick. So if you're going to make a trade with somebody, if you're going to, you know, like if you're going to go into a competitive marketplace the best you can offer is your contracts that you have, the players that you have, but you couldn't really offer anything other than potentially a 2027 first round pick, but it, that could also become a 2028 and it just limits who and what you can be and what you can, as far as like a buyer in a, in a very competitive market. And if you, if you somehow don't make, I mean, you do make the playoffs, your 2024 goes to Atlanta, and then on July 1st, you now have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31, your, all of your draft picks to play with, all your first-round picks, and there is no like encumbered pick going forward, and that's where it becomes a big deal. Hmm. Yeah, we want to make the playoffs, man, it, it, for, for what for you're trying to – Yeah, what you're yeah, trying I mean, to that's do what, as a franchise – that you know you you want to make the make the playoffs cuz it puts everything on schedule it's it gets things off schedule but we when we were talking about Kyle, I don't know how much it changes if you don't make the playoffs hmm. like how how much does it really change because like i mentioned it, the the pick situation and what you could do your flexibility that that changes a bit but we just we talked about earlier if you kings go into the second round this year do you think they're not looking at trying to upgrade at the shooting guard spot and possibly the power forward spot the following year? I think, I think it's the same situation, what you can like, how you can get there may be different, but the writing's on the wall. Well, yeah, but there's a big difference between having, you know, upwards of four first round picks to offer somebody versus having like two. I mean, that's, that's the difference. And it's not just two, it's two, like maybe we can give you a first round pick in three years, but more likely, well, it could be four. That's kind of where you're at. 
And that's not a good situation to be in. Like you don't have much to offer in, in order to change your roster. And, you know, I expect the roster to change too, but like, look, if, if you don't make the playoffs, I, nothing is off the table. I mean, the Sacramento Kings, the same ownership group, same people who have been here doing stuff for the last 10, 11 years. So like, I don't know what it would mean, but I do know that, you know, we're hearing today. I, I know Damien, you saw it on Twitter. I, I, I've been hit up the same way you have like season ticket holders are seeing their season ticket renewals yeah. right now. And yeah. they're seeing a, a 20% bump for some of the seats. And I don't know if that's across the board, but this team is, is charging fans like they did in the playoffs and like they did at the beginning of the season, like they're a championship contender. And that's not exactly going to fly for a whole long time when, uh, when you're not producing the way that it, you know, as of right now that a lot of people expect it. And now it's up to Mike to make sure that they do. Mm-hmm. Andy Aaron and Domas and Kevin yeah. and Harrison and like Keegan. all of them, everyone, yeah, Malik. everyone yeah. in the Kings uniform. Yeah. It's up to them to start, you know, producing and getting to the point where, uh, this team is a, it's a playoff team. Uh, and, and Kenny said a second ago, like they, they got their work cut out for, for them, regardless of what, uh, happens tonight. I don't know if you got a chance to hear our conversation with Chris Biederman, uh, earlier today, Biederman wasn't super, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. He wasn't super encouraged by the way De'Aaron looked at shoot around. Mm. Aaron went through shoot around, but he was like, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to judge De'Aaron because De'Aaron already kind of moves a certain way. Um, it's really hard to judge when you're looking for something. And uh, point being, Biederman didn't sound super encouraged uh, with how uh, De'Aaron looked at shoot around today. Yeah, I mean, uh, here's the problem. I would like to tell you we know exactly what you know De'Aaron has like right. they're listing it as a knee contusion but we don't know if it's a bone bruise we don't know if it's a deep thigh bruise like uh, there is no like determination on what exactly this is that he's dealing with and so my point is I don't know that there I don't think that there's anything structurally he can do to to injure this thing further but you know I, I don't like saying oh it's a pain tolerance issue like, mm-hmm. yeah, pain tolerance, like it hurts so bad you can't move. That's that's not a pain tolerance issue. So uh, he is wearing a sleeve. Um, he does anytime he does get beat up like this, he always walks very like straight legged. Mm-hmm. And unless he's like in full game mode and like putting the car in like, you know, fourth gear and like heading to fifth gear, yeah. that's when you start to see him like kind of move through that like. If not, he is a little stiff. He is. That's just kind of who he is. Straight legged, stiff, very slow. <laughs> very, yeah. very slow when he moves. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and I think, like, look, De'Aaron's going to want to play. He knows what's at stake here. He knows how good that team is. And and just really the dynamic, if you have Fox, Jaden McDaniels will likely slide out and cover Fox. That means that Keegan Murray is going to have a lot of opportunity. If you don't have Fox it takes away both of them because now Jade McDaniels is going to be the one who's trying to stop Keegan Murray. And that might be possible where if not, it could be Anthony Edwards. It could be, I don't know, you know, Mike Connolly jr. Whoever it might be that would be defending Keegan. It's not going to be their best defender. And that's, that's a big reason why De'Aaron Fox is so valuable to this team in every game that he always draws the most difficult cover uh, from the other team, and it opens things up for other players. Well, uh, talking to Biederman as well, um, Damian brought up a good point earlier where the Kings were a little, uh, they were a little upset uh, after the game on Denver against Denver for a number of different reasons. And Damian and I agree with him, kind of took that as a good sign. It was one of the first times this year we felt like. They didn't look at it as like, oh, it's one of 82 or, you know, it happens. It's the league or whatever. Seemed like they were pretty upset. And it was a sign to both of us that they understand the urgency of what's going on. Like, it's not it's not OK to lose any game, whether you're playing Detroit or Denver on the road or whatever. To do what we want to do, we have to step it up and, and play every game like it's a playoff game. 
And that was kind of encouraging to the both of us. You feel the same way about how they reacted to to losing that Denver game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think you should be splintering right now. And, you know, I don't love the comments by Kevin Herter because the stats tell a different story. Like, yeah, he wants to be out there more, but like in his 18 minutes, it wasn't good. So um, I, I don't think Mike Brown did anything wrong pulling. It was at like the 837 mark of the third quarter. He pulled uh, Davion, Harrison, and Kevin. And then you looked up like three minutes later and the game was like a 28-point game. I mean, it's over. And it was already 20 with those guys on the court. So it's not like things were going well. Uh, but again, I, if you have an issue, I don't think that that's, that's either the game or the area to really have that discussion with a media member. Um, he that's was frustrated. Tip- I'll stall him out a little bit. He was frustrated. He was frustrated yeah. with the, way the team's playing. Like I, I'm not, I'm not excusing it, James. Like I, I understand completely what you're saying, but I'm also, he's frustrated. He didn't play. He couldn't help. He's also frustrated. They just got their ass kicked. No, I totally agree. And Hey, look, he played 38 minutes a game before that. So it's not like this is like some trend that he's not playing and he wasn't there to save the team. Um, so, but I, again, I don't want to see that splintering on a two game road trip and like where you faced the champs who you'd beat three times already that year and, and had a f- full arsenal of players and went at you, you know, that's, that's not where I think you typically would see someone voice our frustration. That's all I was saying because weren't the Kings going for like a, a three game road trip. Uh, well, no, no, a three game win streak or did they already blow the three game win streak? Now all my games are running in together. They were um, going for a three-game win streak when they played Miami. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So anyway, like, look. Uh, now they're looking it, at a three-game losing streak. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, things move fast in the NBA. <laughs> well, they moved fast for the Sacramento Kings. This has like been their entire season. Like, I don't. I don't know how else to describe them. This is they're consistently inconsistent. They are. Um, they are, and I think we're we're waiting for something that we haven't really seen yet this year, and I think it's that consistency. Whether the consistency starts tonight or it starts on Monday when they take on Chicago, um, you know, there's a Chicago game next week. There's also a really, really important Los Angeles Lakers game. Mm-hmm. And then there's the San Antonio Spurs who beat the hell out of the Oklahoma City Thunder last night who really challenged the Kings uh, on HBCU night a couple of Thursdays ago on the second night of a back-to-back. So there's 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 going to be challenges facing this team, but that's that's part of this. You could do the old the old football gimmick, like how many the Giants come to mind, the the Steelers. There's a number of teams who, yeah, the playoffs started for them in week eleven. Mm-hmm. If hey, you want a rallying cry, the playoffs start for you right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I said that earlier. I said this is a playoff game. Well, I stole uh, your I stole your <laughs> I stole your line then, James. Oh, there it is, thieving. Oh. Uh, yeah, we were talking about it on the insiders. One of the keys to the game was like, like, look, this is, this is straight up. It's a playoff game. Like that's what position you put yourself in. And like, you think, you think you want to, if you want to be there, you got to do what it takes to get there. You've got to buckle down. You can't have games where you just completely let go of the rope, which is what we saw the other night. Like whatever happened there. I mean, they were, they were strong for about like 14 minutes and then it was just a disaster. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a, a Minnesota team that's playing, played really well all season long, but they also, they, they're kind of like the Kings. They haven't really been here. They have, it was like the Kings last year where the Kings hadn't really been to a third seed. They haven't been up that high in the standings in you know, decades. And so all of a sudden you're in a different like area where teams are coming after you. But also the the like the basketball improves from some teams. The basketball goes downhill from other teams. Uh, lots of teams start resting players, and you're one of those teams that is is trying to do something. And you know if you're Minnesota, this is a team you probably want to focus on. They beat you at home, one of the few home games that the the Timberwolves have lost. But also, it's a team that you could match up in the first round. You know if, if somehow the Kings do make it in through a play in and and they're the eight spot, Minnesota could be the one. If they're the seven spot, Minnesota could be the two. So you've got to put a your best effort out there every time you step on the court, especially against a team that, you know, is going to remember what happens tonight. 
uh, so the streets were saying, James, streets, you were pretty down on the on the Kings after that Nuggets loss. For those who didn't hear, what specifically after that loss had you feeling like it was a little bit more than just a, a loss or a one game situation? It was indicative of a little bit more, possibly. Um, no, I, I don't know that 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 that's the case. Like, um, like that, I I expected them to lose that game. Like, I, Damian and I both were on the same page with that game. I expected them to to get blown out. I don't like the way that some of the players played, you know, I don't, I don't like some of the, the vibe. I, I mean, certainly the vibe coming out of the game. I don't like it all. Um, I wasn't particularly um, excited to see Demona Sabonis go back in the game late. And while I say that I was, I did appreciate Mike Brown putting Keegan Murray back in the game because I understood that I didn't understand Domas going back in. Um, yes, we haven't did. really, well, yes. I mean, I understood it. Mm. Yeah. But I'm not risking the reason. I mean, in all honesty, the reason why you don't put him out there is because at that point in the game, if the other team is unloading their bench and you're unloading your bench, you now have players on the court that are, you know, G League players or two way players or, you know, sort of the back end of your some young guys that can make mistakes and hurt somebody. Yeah. yeah. And one of your young players flew in and, you know, carved up your your star big man and uh, he had to go get stitches um as far as like some of the play like i i wasn't impressed with with davion um i you know that to, to me again it's it has nothing to do with him making shots when he makes shots great that i mean it's like applaud yes but it's just that he didn't look like he was in the right spots all the time on defense i mean on on offense I thought defensively he did what he could against Jamal Murray and Jamal was just too big, too strong and, and went over the top of him. But on the offensive end, he just kept like, if he doesn't have the ball in his hands, if he's not in a pick and roll situation, he's kind of in trouble. And I, I was still surprised by it because, you know, it's not like he didn't know he was, he was going to start. He had a good idea. You know, the Kings know a lot more about whether De'Aaron Fox is playing or not. Uh, than we do right now. And, you know, so it's not like Davion didn't have an understanding, but he wasn't the only one. Like the, there are other players that struggled in that game that you're just kind of like, look, that was an opportunity and you didn't really take advantage of it. And I feel that that happens too many times where Chris Duarte, I thought did take advantage of the opportunity before he got poked in the eye early. I thought he was good. And then when he came back in the game in the fourth, it was like, okay, one man wrecking crew. That's fine. Um, you know, I, I thought he played better. So, um, it's just tough. Again, like we've had this conversation too many times with when it comes to Davion and, and I don't think he's a bad player. I just think it's a, it's a tough fit and they don't, they just don't play his style of basketball. And, uh, you know, that's why I, I think that they kicked the tires on DeLon right at the, at the trade deadline. And they probably should have looked, they should probably should have been more aggressive at that position. We'll come back. Uh, James will tell us more why he hates the Sacramento Kings uh, as we prepare for the Kings and the Timberwolves tonight. That's what a Ramsey, too. It's like, so? <laughs> more with the insider from the insiders, our man James Ham here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Two things. Got to get up real quick. AJ, uh, a.k.a. Aldrin. They said, they said AJ was the Lord Tensai <laughs> gimmick switch of Aldrin J. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't have a bone to pick to you. I don't know why I said it that way, but I don't have a bone to pick with you. Just two things. So number one, uh, Aldrin says, Fresno. well, first of all, he got on this by talking about the Sac State football schedule was out. I saw the same thing. I kind of want to go to the Fresno State game too. I've never been to a Fresno State football game. I definitely want to go. So that'll be pretty dope. But he said, it's crazy to say Fresno State probably got the best football football atmosphere in Cali. Nah, that's probably the second best. Who's the best? Let's see. Is it? Absolutely. Still? Yeah. I've been to a game. Let's see. Let's see. It's, it's, it's a pretty dope. I will say like about Fresno. It was a that... random game. It was like Arizona too. So you when you talk about a big game like if Oregon's in town or, you know, it's SC versus UCLA, I mean, that's, that's electric. Fresno State is dope though. I think they're second. I think they're second. That's fair. Yeah. Cal, Cal used to have some good stuff going on too. 
the one time I went to a cow game. That was pretty cool. Did somebody get booted from the chat earlier? Have they been allowed back I mean, in? Yeah, that's who AJ. AJ is Aldrin. Uh, yeah. I don't know. We're not sure exactly what went down here. Not, we're not sure. We're not sure. Is we're he back kidding. or no? Yeah, AJ. AJ is Aldrin got kicked out. Aldrin came back as AJ. Oh, okay. Welcome back, AJ. Yeah, he's, he's back. I don't know. I don't know what happened. The other thing uh, AJ uh, said, or he asked the question. He didn't, he didn't make a statement, but he said he heard that Fresno has the best Mexican food in California. They got some bomb Mexican food. I think, um, honestly, I think Oakland might have the best Mexican food in, in California. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw Modesto and Stockton in there. Yeah. In Central Valley. 209 never, 209's never, got the best. I've never had uh, any Mexican food out there. I try to avoid Fresno. Just it's too hot in Fresno. It's really hot. I go I go there for some family stuff. I enjoy my time in Fresno. Hmm. I enjoy my time. I had to go to Modesto all the time. Fresno coming up for this uh, this Night for Lovers concert. Hmm. Good amount, good amount of people. I had to go to Modesto all the time as a kid for family. That's where my grandparents lived and and other family members. And was not a fan of driving down there. Hmm. It's a lot different now, James. <laughs> Give us another chance, Modesto. <laughs> yeah, it's a little yeah. bit more developed. Yeah, no, it is. It is like, but my grandparents lived on a farm, like by the channel. I don't like it. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. The big waterway that goes through the middle. Yeah, it's probably the Tuolumne, Tuolumne River or something like that, maybe. Yeah, something my like grandparents that. lived like on the channel and they had a bridge that went from like the main road to their, their property. So we had to drive over the channel. Mm. I don't know. David, do you have any thought on who has the best Mexican food in California? I do not. I said Oakland. I think California, oh. just in general. Like that's right, Collins. It definitely ain't Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can go just about anywhere in California and get good Mexican, but if you leave California, you get some really bad Mexican food. That's terrible. I've heard San Diego too. I've, I've heard San Diego. I, I, I mm. went to San Diego. I didn't have Mexican food, so I don't know. But I've heard San Diego is it. Oakland, Oakland still got the best. I mean, Oakland got the the food trucks, the Mexican trucks that uh, go crazy. Barrio Mexican food is always solid. Yeah, the, the the little food trucks. They got some cool little spots out here in Sac too. Obviously the restaurants, but they got some little food trucks. Uh, at least in South Sac, off a of, off a of Freeport, that go hard. That go hard. Thank. This is facts, all you you hit, grounds. You got hit super Tacadia in San Jose. That's the best spot right there. Mm. I can't remember the last time I was in San Jose. We were, we, we've got to be talking about 10, 15, almost 20 years now. I mean, I did go to a Niners game. That's still Santa Clara, though. Hmm. I ain't been to San Jose. And since I went to um, the Ambassador when I was in college. Hmm. Shout out to the Ambassador, E40's club. I don't know if it's still there or not. Why do you have a club in San Jose? I was kind of popping. Just making sure we don't have any updates okay. still yet on injury. We're back. We're back uh, Hammer. Hey, guys. Before we get back into the Kings, um, there's just some things that we have to take care of. Okay. Simple as that. Um, I was mentioned on, on Twitter by none other, none other, then our guy Mitch, he said, at IMK Diddy, good imitation by Kyle. Great to have fun while my hip is killing me on my first day of retirement. Mm -hmm. So then Miss Mac 10 says, happy retirement, Mitch. And Mitch says, thank you, Sonia. Still waiting on Casey and Damien to wish the same from their big chairs. Happy retirement, Mitch. I, yeah, happy Maybe retirement, said, Mitch. Like Give him air horns. Give him air horns, man. Mitch. Happy retirement, big dog. It's, it's six thirty Eastern time. Do you think he's listening? <laughs> well, he sent this twenty-one minutes ago. Well, maybe he's listening. Poor hey, guy's yeah. on the DL. Happy retirement, Mitch. Poor guy hurt his hip on his first day of retirement. <laughs> I'm not laughing. That's well, that's funny. like the best Mitch story, though. Mitch, how's your retirement going? Oh, I blew out my hip my first day. <laughs> you know? 
I, I, I agree with this sentiment right here from David Jackson. <laughs> Mitch, please. Mitch, please. Mitch, you're you that guy, man. Hope you're enjoying retirement, man. Enjoying the, the grandson. Uh, all that good stuff, man. Hammer, I think you just looked up the injury report. Any updates there regarding De'Aaron Fox and Anthony Edwards? No, I'm still waiting for the updated, updated injury Oh, the new one hasn't dropped. Okay. Yeah. It, it should have already dropped, but uh, welcome to the NBA. I'm yeah. guessing De'Aaron's a game time decision similar to what he was last time. Yeah. Is there yeah. is there a uh, belief, maybe from both of you guys, that you just – if it if it's a game time decision, just don't play him and wait till you get back home on Monday. Give him an extra if he's sore like that. Give him an extra two days or something like that. Well, I don't know. Yeah, if I would. If I was the Aaron, I'd, I'd leave it up to him. Yeah, if yeah. I was the Aaron, I'd want to play. Yeah, but that's what I do then. People, you know, you know, but you know how people are no, nowadays. I know. They're like, hey, we'll just give him the extra day. Give him an extra forty eight hours or something like that. But, yeah, I feel like Fox though. <laughs> no. I'm going to play. Yeah, That's I mean, you know, huh? players know their bodies better better than anyone else. So, again, this is a – it's a bruise. So, if he can play and he feels comfortable, then he'll play. And if not, I don't have any problems with him not playing. I mean, like, look, I, I once watched – I think Marcus Thornton missed 20 games with the, with the deep thigh bruise. Just mm -hmm. couldn't shake it. And, wow. you know, so – if it's if it's something like that, maybe. Uh, but you know, e either way, he he hit knees pretty good with uh with Hawkes. So, yeah. All right. Well, I, I guess we'll find out when the NBA feels like telling us. <laughs> this is a five o'clock start. What time is it in Minnesota? It is a five o'clock start tonight. It's a five oh. o'clock. Yeah. It's poor. Uh, I mean, whatever. But poor Chicago Bulls fans and Chicago Bulls. They got to play a nine o'clock game tonight because <laughs> they're the Why? late game on ESPN. They couldn't find a game west of the Mississippi that they could put in the late game. Oh, wow. So they're playing at 7 p.m. Pacific in that Chicago. That is bizarre. Yeah. That's not great. Yeah. Um, the uh, the injury report just came out and it's the same. So they're both still questionable. Okay. Yeah. Well, De'Aaron can't play. I say Anthony. Edwards that that's only play. fair. That's 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 only fair. Um, and I assume the, all indications are it, Domas is fine. Just stitches from the, uh, the young elbow that shredded his is face like to, an old UFC fight. Isn't it on like his forehead? Is he going to have to wear a headband tonight? No, I think it's his cheek. He's going to look like, like uh, Dusty Rhodes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on his his cheek. So, um, yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think Domas no will be fine. No concussion protocol. <laughs> concussion. That that would be tragic. Um, <laughs> like Mason Jones plays like thirteen minutes in one game, gets a tech in another, and and costs you Domas <laughs> Simonis. That would not not be great. <laughs> um, what's the uh, what do you think the message is for Mike? There's there was rumblings that there was a pretty lengthy film session. Uh, yesterday what do you what do you think the message is that he's trying to get across to these guys right now huh. i mean at is a certain still defense 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 no if i'm him i mean at this point i mean somebody put out the stats when they score what is it 120 or more like their their record is really really good like he just gotta whatever the like the confines you've put on this team to to slow them down or to you know like the to take away who they were last year, just like strip all that down right now. Just go, just go play. Stop thinking, just start, just start, you know, playing the game instinctively, which is exact, exactly what they did last year. You know, they, it's a read and react offense. Just go out there and, and find yourself. And because even if you lose this game, at least make it a competitive loss, make it a, a loss that you feel like you were right there and you could have done something. And so when you walk into this home stand that's coming up and all these home games, you at least have something to build on and, and some sort of identity to build on. And I'm not saying stop playing defense. What I'm saying is that this team should be in a lot of like high scoring games and they're just not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they need to get the ball out of the basket and get up court. 
and they they need to like they need to get in transition as much as possible and they need to play with a, a much more uh like a sense of urgency that we had just haven't seen consistently and so that's kind of where i would be if i was mike um you know but who knows i mean i, I really do feel like they they've kind of made excuses for the fact that that their offense isn't as good as it was last year and that's what i look at there aren't any reasons like you know there are reasons and there are excuses for me there there are only excuses why this offense is not high octane and, and flying all over the place like it was last year and that you need to get back to it you know whether it's like more pick and rolls or more dhos or or guys just hitting their shots and yeah. they need to figure it out in my book yeah it's it, you worry about all that other stuff that you're trying to improve on and all this other stuff. You worry about that in the off season and next year and maybe with different guys right now, it's time to get back to basics, almost akin to what happened after the Houston games. Remember when Domas came to practice, not wanting to hear anything from Jake and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, talk about, they had some discussions about the offense, you know, and a lot of people believe that he, he talked about, Hey, let's get back to running the plays that were working last year. It's time to do more of that. Yeah. Like get back to what you guys are comfortable with, what you know, and what has been proven to be effective and write that all the way to the, to the end of the season. Yeah. I also, they need to start realizing when, like when someone's got the hot hand and I just like all season long, I felt that way that they, they don't know how to ride the hot hand. And we saw it even with this, uh, with, with the Denver loss, man, Keegan Murray was on fire and then you went away from him and maybe he didn't do a good enough job to get open or maybe it was just situational, but at some point it can't be situational anymore. You you have to actually force feed and mm -hmm. say, look, we, if you don't step up in this moment, we're going to lose this game and our best path forward is with you. And so I think that that's something that, you know, we've seen it even with Harrison, you know, Harrison finishes a game like six of eight from the field. That shouldn't happen. You know, if, if you've hit six of eight, you need to hit 10 of 14. You know, that's, that's something that this team doesn't do a good job of recognizing. And maybe it's that other teams are taking some things away, but I just feel like look, this team is slightly predictable and slightly one dimensional when it comes to the offensive end right now, it's, you know, a ton of three point shots. If you're hitting your three point shots, you got a shot. Uh, but just like we saw in the Denver game where, you know, you hit seven of 10 in the first quarter, you miss all your all 10 in the second quarter and the game's over and you just can't be that team. This team was like way too good on the offensive end last year. People forget they didn't just, they weren't just a great three point shooting team. They led the league in two point field goal percentage as well. And they got to the line a bunch and they hit their free throws. The, these are like who you were as a team. Like the, uh, the lack of identity still is still like slightly jarring to me. Who do you hold responsible for them being so predictable on the offensive end? I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess it's like certain, like they now have a book on you for sure. You know, we talked a little bit of, about like the Miami heat, you play the Miami heat, you play them twice a year. So when they throw this wackadoodle like crazy zone at you that no one else uses, it it can throw you for a loop, especially when you're on the second night of a back to back and you didn't have a big walkthrough to like sit there and kind of figure it out and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, you know, the more you play against that, the better you are against it. And the Kings, uh, they're a team that teams have now played multiple times. They understand what's coming. They understand what Sabonis means to the team and what Fox likes to do, their tendencies and, you know, the, you know, the, the DHO that Kevin Herter runs, they're, they're figuring out different ways to defend some of this stuff. But at the same time, I think the Kings have missed like an abnormal amount of open looks. And so I can't just blame it on the, the league figuring you out. There are certain teams that know exactly how to slow down Demonis Sabonis. And, but then you get to most of these other games and they don't. So you, the Kings need to do a better job of moving the ball and, and moving around the court. You know, they're, they're getting stagnant and they, they've got to stop with all that and they have to use tempo, use pace, get out, move. You got a fast team. Yeah. 
Uh, James, you, you hit the nail on the head with my favorite random stat ever is getting the wide open looks. And they seem to be generating the same uh, amount of wide open looks this year than they had that they did last year. They're just not consistently hitting um, those same looks for whatever reason. And I, I, I do believe as long as they continue to generate those type of looks, um, you always, you're always going to at least have the opportunity. You know, that's, that's what you ask for. You, you're going to get those same looks. You're going to have the opportunity to knock them down. Will they knock them down? We'll see, you know, on a consistent basis, we'll see. But the offense is working to some degree if they're able to continue to generate those open looks. No, I think it is. I, I mean, maybe it is just that the pe- players need to be more locked in and they need to hit their shots. You know, I, I part of it is that they just aren't as good shooting the three this year. And then, you know, on the defensive end, you know, they're still, they've got things that make them a hot mess all the time. But, um, you know, the, the improvement, the maintain and improve thing, I don't think at this point we can say they've even maintained. We, we've kind of hit a point where you're looking at them in a different light than you did even last year where, you know, there, there isn't a lot of semblance of the same group and, and the same sort of mentality. So we'll see though, because this is one of those games, you know, Kyle talked about this uh, earlier. The Kings, every time they're up against spots like this, where you kind of just felt like, Oh, well, they're probably going to lose this game. That's when they stepped up and beat teams last year. And it's even when they stepped up and beat teams earlier this year, like, like Minnesota, you know, they lost the two games in a row to new Orleans and they had that six game road trip. And the last game of the six game road trip, we're all thinking, okay, Final game, probably going to get thumped by a Timberwolves team that hasn't lost at home. And the Kings went in there and found a way. So if if that's who we see tonight, like the gritty fire back at you, Kings, then that would be a whole lot more like convincing, like heading into this final like 24 games. And I think that's the concern. I mean, you go back to that game in November uh, when they beat the Timberwolves. Darren had 36 in that one. Mm. Man, a lot of they played. That, that was one of the best games they played all year. That that game when they beat Minnesota, they were they were fantastic on offense and frustrated them on, on the defensive end as well. Yeah, and no Jaden McDaniels in that game. No, Kevin Herter. No, who are they missing? I think Keegan. Yeah. Well, there's no Keegan, huh? There's no Keegan. Yeah, Herter started. Oh. Harrison started. Doma started. Because I'm looking at Duarte because there's a big zero in the far right column. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Chris Duarte played 21 minutes, didn't score. I'm like, wait a minute. Kevin Herter played. Who didn't play? <laughs> Keegan was out in that first game against Minnesota. Hmm. And you got, you got 10 points from – I shouldn't have. Chuckled the way you got 10 points from Kessler Edwards in that game. Yeah, 17 you can see from, from Domas. You got you got that second unit played really, really well in that game. Yeah, but the King's second unit hasn't played really well in a while. So that's that was that was kind of leading us to the next thing. Is it's like that's one, you know, a conversation we've had a couple of times this week, and you know, plenty of people have called in and said it felt like last year this team had depth and the depth was performing mm-hmm. this year it feels like i just I, I you know you pull up this past minnesota game they went 124 111 there might not be very many games that you can pull up where it looks like you get you get damn near three guys off the bench i say damn near because trey had nine damn near three guys off the bench having double figures yeah i think the bench scored 45 in that game including yeah, kessler I, edwards who may not have played since then <laughs> i don't even remember yeah. the last time we saw kessler edwards or... i need to see kessler in this game like uh, in this game tonight, like he, he is a good matchup because that's the second time they played Minnesota. Jaden McDaniels did play and he got loose. He, he hit the Kings for like 20 points um, and, and was really impactful on the defensive end. So that's a good matchup. I, I also, I like Kessler against uh, like run him out there against cat for a few minutes. That's not bad. Uh, they just have a lot of weird matchups too. Like Nas Reed is a tough guy. Who who is going to defend Nas Reed on on this team? I mean, maybe Trey Lyles, but I don't know. That's a tough one. Alex Lynn time, baby. Yeah. Carl Anthony Alex Towns Lynn. was four or five from three in that game. Mm. The one they lost. Mm. The one in Minnesota. In that yeah. one. The one in Minnesota. Yeah. The it's, one in Sacramento. That was 
That was a frustrating game because they didn't really. Kings Kings were below 100. That was one of their games where yeah. they were below 100. And they had to like, they, they, had, they had almost a Miami-like comeback to get that game to maybe like six or four minutes to go. And then Minnesota pulled away again. But they, they struggled in that one. Bench had 20 in that one versus, would you say, second ago, James, 40 in the first one? 45. I think that was yeah. the number. Yeah, yeah, they had 20 in this one. Um, another big performance from De'Aaron. Uh, Keegan played really well, triple double uh, from Domas. And a bad herder game. A really, really bad herder game. 15 minutes, one of mm. seven. That was in the Sacramento, Sacramento game. game. Yeah. 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 They're, they're an interesting squad. I, I think, again, they don't have Kyle. Well, Kyle Anderson is doubtful tonight. That can be big for the Kings, too. Kyle Anderson, I, I don't know why Kyle Anderson gives anyone problems. Like, I just, it's kind of like, you know, going up against a knuckleball pitcher. Actually, I, it's really incredible. Yeah. <laughs> His shot is really one of the most incredible things in the entire league. It really is. Kyle compared him to Jamie Moyer, the old pitcher who uh, yeah, pitched till he was like 49 and yeah. just like lobbed the ball like the whole time. And you're like, how in the world is this working? And uh, like that's, yeah, that's exactly what, uh, what Kyle Anderson does. He just like slowly beats you and it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm hoping they, I'm hoping they show up and play well today, regardless of who, who plays. I was really encouraged and hyped watching the beginning the first quarter and a half on Wednesday. And it was pretty deflating <laughs> that it just died. But you know what? Kill, I, I was perfectly fine watching that basketball game. Like they're playing well. Mm -hmm. And then I don't, I don't remember if it was a TV graphic or the computer. I was like, Oh, there's seven of 10 from three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's not going to continue. So can they strike a middle point? Mm -hmm. And the emphatic answer was no. We're going to go from white hot to ice cold. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the, we do this, how, how many times, we I think we did this, one of the Detroit games, I can't remember which one it was, where I think Detroit started really, really hot in the first quarter. Yeah, the, the one in Detroit. And it was like, this. Mm. Okay, that's not going to continue. Right. So and they what, score 49? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At first. <laughs> so I feel like Denver was like, <laughs> they're not going to keep doing this. <laughs> and sure enough, they missed their next like 12. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Uh, according to our friend Chris Biederman, De'Aaron Fox will go through his pregame routine before determining his status tonight with a left knee contusion. Did the same thing on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what, all right. It should be an interesting game. I, I imagine Anthony Edwards is probably doing something similar. Yeah. I don't, I don't, it, Anthony Edwards role, is it, is it the ankle from the other night? Yes. Yeah, oh, it is. Okay. Mm. I'd imagine he's going through the same thing. Is this their first game back? No, they played a. They played. He played like the next night. They had a back to back. Oh, okay. and he played. Okay, but I, you know, I guess they were still saying, you know, questionable. Okay. Hmm. They may have still had some adrenaline <laughs> that so. that next that next game. Um, I didn't know he they doesn't played that. really miss games. Yeah, I, I, Anthony tough. Edwards. He's missed, I think, three games on the season. It's a good. That's a really good basketball team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's a you know, a dumb statement given their record at the top of the Western Conference. But I think there were a lot of questions about them entering the year. There were people dissecting their schedule, like, oh, they haven't played any good teams yet. I wasn't even sure who they were when they came to the Golden One Center in December. It was after that game that I was like, you need to pay a little bit more attention to the squad. They're good, man. Ant-Man, uh, the following night, they played Memphis, played 40 minutes, 34 points. Yeah, Anthony Edwards is playing tonight. <laughs> Yeah, probably. He's playing tonight. All right. Well, like I said, they just got to play good. Hey. More importantly, just get past this game. <laughs> well, you get past it. Get, past this game. get a win. Why not? Yeah. Get a win. And when, you when do we, get um, an extra day off this weekend. Sorry. Yeah. So you that's know. the other thing. Yeah. They, they 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 have the whole weekend off. You won't miss anything. We'll be back Monday to get you ready for Chicago. When we step out of Memorial Auditorium tonight, I want to see. That beam in the sky. Oh yeah. I want to see that beam in the sky once. Yeah, time. Do There's the a lot of out of towners coming out of here do, for do this the uh, concert. For when I want them to see that, that that beam in the sky. When we step into the memorial auditorium, be pretty damn yeah, close, right? Pretty close. 
pretty, pretty close. close. We can yeah. start like being oh. chance. Come on, as we're walking well, in, we we are, we'll get fine. We'll get sued. <laughs> we're not allowed to talk at this concert tonight. <laughs> there are yeah, James. Radio stations across this region hate D-Lo and Casey. You just have to hop on stage. It's sign language or something, I guess. Oh, we're going to be on stage. We, we, we just, guys, don't say anything. We'll give them a picture. You guys can't say anything. That's crazy. They'd be like, you can't say a word. What, you don't even, what if we, we don't just know start, who we are. What like, if we just start yelling without the mics? Does that count? These people. Very clowns. confused with what's happening here. Clown no, they're scared of us. No, J Well, James, this is what I encourage. James. Hey, hey, I'm, that 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 starts at ten o'clock too. By the way, that starts at ten o'clock. Oh, this is yeah, this is the that ain't just, that ain't just twelve o'clock. Yeah, That's no. at ten o'clock. We had a presentation today in class where we went over graphs and what yeah. numbers mean, and that when people tweet stupid stuff, they're gonna we're gonna start throwing receipts out. <laughs> this James is a receipt, and it's funny because okay, you know what? We ain't doing this. Mm -mm. No, no, we ain't doing this. This is how the show started. This is not going to be how the show ended. We're headed into a huge night for D'Lo and KC and 102.5. We're headed out to the Sacramento Memorial Auditorium. Oh, go ahead, James. Put that on. James, put Fedora hands. Hey, oh, yeah. They're going to be playing. Play. Hey, Fedora D'Lo's in the house tonight. <laughs> Fedora D'Lo's in the house tonight. Just relax. Let's have a good, yeah, let's have a good Friday. Let's have a good Saturday. Good weekend. That's what it is. We're going to have a great weekend. And I think we got uh, Kings coverage coming up next. We got mm -hmm. Purple and Black. Mm -hmm. Uh, pre-game show on the way and then we'll be back here on monday mm -hmm. uh, to get you ready for a huge week yes. of king's basketball yes. that includes chicago the los angeles lakers mm. another uh visit from the san antonio spurs uh all during the work week next week so we have got you covered uh, appreciate you making us a part of your